A good morning to everybody joining us today for our Challenges Facing Manufacturing in 2022 webinar. Apologies that we are just a few minutes late in starting while we were waiting for others to join. I'm grateful to you for investing your time in this webinar, and I hope that you learn something that helps to improve your company's performance in some way during 2022. Forewarned is most definitely forearmed in this volatile environment. My colleagues and I have spent considerable time over the past three months researching the content of this webinar. We have more sources than we're able to mention here. However, these sources include, amongst others, the Bank of England, IMF, ONS, EU, the Financial Times, the Manufacturer Magazine, Make UK and Gov.UK. To ensure I report the facts and figures to you correctly, I shall be reading from a pre-prepared transcript. To start with, let me introduce myself. I'm Cliff Brereton, CEO of Datahone, a manufacturing software and systems provider based in Leeds. My career history includes being an apprentice toolmaker, draftsman, computer salesman, professional manager and director at IBM UK, Director of HM Government Data Science Laboratory, Professor in the School of Engineering at Liverpool University, and Founder of Data Home Limited. I also have several non-executive posts and activities, including being a Manufacturing Industry Advisor to the Bank of England on interest rate policies. It is a broad mix, though through this, I believe I am well qualified to talk about manufacturing and the importance of data to this industry. You will also be hearing from four other UK manufacturing company directors during the course of this session. I need to let you know that we're recording this live webinar for replay to other audiences. In the interest of time, let's press on to talk a little bit about some of the cost and supply challenges we as manufacturers might or probably will face during this coming year. The most heavily publicized and visible increase observed through late 2021 was energy costs. Most of us are large consumers of three phase 415 volt power supplies for machinery and ancillary support services, such as compressors, computing equipment, and back office functions. We have observed a height in wholesale electrical charges per megawatt hour from £90 in January of last year to £400 just before the year's close. Fortunately, this price has come off of its December high, but remains considerably above its starting position in 2021. For those of you in process manufacturing industries or just using it for heating factories and offices, gas costs are also a consideration. In that same 2021 time period, per therm costs for gas increased from £60 at the start of the year, ending the year at £210, having peaked at £450 just a month or so earlier. The UK has finite generation, supply and storage capabilities for energy. Because of this, we will continue to have significant price fluctuations based on the supply side being near imbalance with demand. Furthermore, dwindling competition within the energy market on the supply side is not helping to tether prices. In comparison, China's manufacturing sector has abundant low cost energy and no added sustainability tariffs. In saying this, we are making a factual observation and not explicitly taking a position here on the rights and wrongs of the UK's approach to energy supply. Though it is difficult to imagine how we have ended up where we are, other than through mismanagement of energy strategies by successive UK administrations. One energy source we left out was oil. The UK has strong manufacturing industries in plastics and pharmaceutical products. Both of these sectors have highly refined petrochemical inputs as a critical source of raw materials. Oil costs are significant to the overall cost of sale for companies working within these sectors. 
A barrel of Brent crude saw a 60% increase from the start through to the end of 2021. Raw material prices have risen particularly sharply for metals. The cost of copper, which is considered an economic barometer due to its versatile usage, usages, has roughly doubled within the year and is at the highest level in around nine years. Still saw an increase of £400 per unit traded to £600 on the London Metals Exchange, though this has recovered to £480 now, but is still almost 20% up on a year ago. Price increases are not the whole story when it comes to raw materials. EUPC, a trade body representing European plastics converters, says that companies have been reporting difficulties getting the necessary raw materials and alarmingly low stocks to keep their production running. Those supplying to automotive, aerospace, construction and packaging face supply chain disruption. Magnesium is a critical component of all aluminium alloy sheets and billets. There is no substitute. 85% of the world's supply is mined and smelted in China. In late 2021, China announced the closure of 35 of its 50 smelting works, advising that the output of the remaining smelters was for domestic consumption by Chinese manufacturers. Many manufacturers have worked hard in recent years to improve the efficiency of their supply chains and workflows using techniques such as Lean Six Sigma. Our goal was to reduce stock holding, eliminate unnecessary processes and variations, creating a truly just-in-time workflow. However, recent disruptions to supply chains, such as the uncertainty in the build-up to Brexit, COVID-19 affecting port and manufacturing processes, and unexpected shipping disruptions, such as the Evergrande in the Suez, have exposed these highly efficient supply chains. For example, in our business, there is a global shortage of ARM-based computing processors in specific essential components that we use. Previously, we were able to guarantee next day delivery from our supplier. Now this can be weeks, if at all. This has led us to a just-in-case process, increasing our number of suppliers and stock holding, thereby introducing variation and costs into our previously lean procurement cycle. I'm sure many of you have either done or will have to do similar throughout 2022, putting more squeeze on margins. While on the topic of shipping and distribution, several of our customers who import high volume quantities of materials or components or physically large items have seen transport costs for a shipping container rise in 2021 from around £2,000 to £20,000. Even where the majority of our supplies and distribution of finished goods do not have significant import or export components, the earlier mentioned 60% increase in crude oil costs has led to higher diesel and consequently higher local distribution costs as transportation companies are keen to pass on their additional fuel costs to their customers to maintain their own margin, building up inflationary pressure. Furthermore, though this has eased a little recently, HGV driver shortages within the distribution sector have led to a supply and demand cycle, which naturally provides availability to the highest bidders. For those of us delivering to major cities, ultra low emission tariffs already exist in London are, are being expanded in 2022 to other major UK cities. The London scheme now covers a larger area since the beginning of the new year. We can expect a cost plus increase by transportation companies for this, whether you are within one of these zones or not. Depending on where you are located, this may also affect the inflationary pressures on your staff traveling to and from work. During the autumn statement, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak forecast general inflation for the whole of 2022 at 4%. This in and of itself is twice the 2% figure we have used for many years, whereby the governor of the Bank of England was required to excuse himself and reduce this headline figure by two below 2%. 
Economists state that already against a more realistic basket of goods, the headline number is at 7%, not 4%, and may rise to 10% during the first half of 2022. Yesterday, the BBC reported the consumer price index at 5.4%, the highest figure since March of 1992. For business leaders, inflation is always unhelpful and, in most instances, will reduce profit margins. Uncertainty in these rates provides further complications in the spend planning cycle. This is also true for our employees, and we can expect to see pressure on increases in wages during this year if we are not already under such pressure. Finally, for this section, compounding our costs further is the increase in national insurance contributions. Starting in April, employers and employees will each be incurring a 1.5% increase in NICs for the next tax year and beyond. A future 6% increase in corporation tax in tax year 23-24 will negatively impact business investment confidence and international inward investment to the manufacturing sector. While this rise in corporation tax is not until the next financial year, expect to see some impact on investment this year ahead of that increase. I'm pleased to have reached the end of this list, although let's be clear, it is far from exhaustive. These cost factors alone are fundamental and are applying a squeeze to manufacturing margins. Using a general rule of what goes up must come down, we could expect that some of these additional costs and disruptions that I've referred to pass or come down during this year or subsequently in the midterm. There is absolutely no certainty of this, however. This would assume that commodity and other cost increases have indeed reached a peak. Also no certainty of this. Within our own company, we are planning for not being able to return to as lean a just-in-time processes as we might have had previously pre-pandemic, and like many others, will embrace a hybrid model that includes both just-in-time and just-in-case to avoid business disruption, whether or not this has a marginal increase in costs for doing so. The cumulative impact of these rises and others I haven't mentioned depends very much on the type of manufacturing you carry out and which commodities you use. So there is no average squeeze across the sector, but a span. For 2022, our forecast cost increase for manufacturers is between eight and 18%, with some outliers above or below. As a slightly sobering point of reference from our own survey analysis, a small an increase in the cost base of 4%, will see nearly 20% of UK manufacturers move from an operating profit to an operating loss. If you are in the fortunate position of being able to reprice and pass additional costs onto your customers, then you're going to be somewhat shielded from margin erosion in 2022. This, however, could impact your competitiveness and threats from others, including overseas, might emerge and erode your revenue line. An alternate approach, or better still, together with pricing policies, is to look for improvement and efficiencies in processes and workflows throughout the manufacturing process, thereby reducing your cost of goods sold. By doing so, margins are maintained or even grown, and competitiveness is maintained or even strengthened. Every year, we undertake a review of gross and EBITDA margins for, rep for a representative segment of UK manufacturers from company house data on their latest po posted financial returns. Our current review of this data produced during December and January shows the following. The average revenue per employee amongst the surveyed manufacturers was 165,000 pounds. The average gross profit per employee was 41,000 and the average operating profit per employee was £6,000. In percentage terms, the average gross profit was 26% and net profit was 6%. Gross profit provides the best indication of manufacturing efficiency. 
If you achieve above these averages, congratulations. But be cautious of the headwinds referred to previously, negatively impacting these margins in 2022. If you are below these averages, there is work to do. And digital solutions referred to later in this presentation need to be of serious consideration now for financial sustainability in a less than favorable economic climate. Improving manufacturing efficiencies and productivity is the most effective way of sustaining and unlocking new profit margins. According to the Bank of England, in a recent survey, the UK lags behind every G7 nation except for Japan when it comes to productivity. Our significant industrial competitors output in four days what it takes the UK to produce in five. A further IMF study covering recovering growth from pandemic lows showed the UK in last place in the G7 and a full six percentage points in productivity year on year behind the US, who led the group of seven. Although this IMF study looked at all industries and not specifically at the manufacturing sector alone, as a sector, it would be unreasonable for us to claim that with a few notable exceptions, we are anything but suboptimal in our efficiency within manufacturing processes compared to other nations. Counterintuitively, this may be good news as there must be hidden efficiency productivity margins to unlock that others are already exploiting. The pandemic has added an artificial skew to some manufacturing sectors, with, for example, engineering fearing worse than consumer goods manufacturers. People still need to eat, but airlines are reducing their fleets. There are many examples of winners and losers. The Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, has long been an indicator of confidence in this sector. According to their latest report for January, 63% of firms forecast that production would increase over the coming 12 months. This compared to only 6% anticipating a contraction. The optimism reflected expectations of renewed global economic growth, planned investment and hopes for less disruption caused by COVID-19, Brexit and supply chain issues. It remains to be seen against the challenges we have spoken of already, whether such optimism, optimism is long lived, particularly when quoting rising costs in December, saw the further substantial increase in average input prices with the rate of inflation for these amongst the steepest the PMI survey has ever seen. Due to falling business investments for the financial years since 2019, the Chancellor announced in last year's budget a new super deduction tax relief of 130% or 25 pence in the pound for capital purchases purchases of machinery, ancillary plant, and computer equipment, etc. This has allowed some manufacturers to replace older, less efficient equipment with more performant new machines, install automation such as robots, and invest in factory productivity computing systems such as Data Home's Intelligent Factory. In, recogni in recognizing the poor productivity performance in the UK versus international competition, the government has for some time been funding productivity initiatives open to manufacturers, both national and local. Perhaps the most high profile of these schemes is Made Smarter, headed up by former Siemens chief executive Jürgen Mayer. The Made Smarter scheme offers expert consultancy in digital manufacturing and industry 4.0 techniques such as additive manufacturing or data analytics, and has up to 50% matched capital funding investments for deployments. Some data home clients have had 50% of their, their capital cost of their intelligent factory system funded through this scheme recently, with the remaining customer funded 50% attracting the super deduction uh, allowance. There are also many local schemes, some of which, though, are only available to SMEs. These local schemes provide matched or partially matched funding 
for technological improvement, driving productivity growth and employment. If you haven't done so already, I would certainly recommend all manufacturers make a friend of their local enterprise partnership to understand which schemes might be available to you. One reason why our international competitors outperform the UK in productivity has been their greater willingness to invest in new technologies, many of which are grouped under the collective term Industry 4.0. These technology groups include the Internet of Things, cloud computing, additive manufacturing, digital twins, data and analytics. The Data Hone Intelligent Factory embraces 50% of these categories to deliver real-time performance metrics and alerts. Solutions within Industry 4.0 reduce raw material wastage, wastage, allow for more complex and lower cost products to be produced, reduce energy usage and deliver more efficiency from production workflows. Some or all of the cost factors outlined in the headwind sector will in, impact all of us manufacturers in 2022. This can only be problematic for maintaining margins and remaining competitive. With restrictions from the pandemic expected to ease and greater confidence in the market, new sales can offset some additional costs. However, in percentage terms, this will not maintain margins. Improving efficiencies of direct labor and factory overheads, such as machine performance, will unlock eight to 12% improvements in efficiencies according to best in class case studies by Forrester et al, capturing at least three to five extra percentage points in gross profit. The industry 4.0 tools needed to identify, improve, maintain high efficient production such as the Data Hone Intelligent Factory, attract significant funding support from national and local schemes, as well as tax relief benefits. More often than not, most schemes are undersubscribed and well-presented cost-benefit cases will be approved for funding. 30% of Data Hone's clients received a grant from these schemes in 2021. If you need any help identifying funding sources for yourselves, our team can help you. So just drop me a line. For the time being, that's enough from me. I now want to introduce you to four other UK manufacturers. All are users of Data Hone Intelligent Factory Systems for their perspectives on the challenges they are facing and some of the solutions they are employing to be as productive as they can be throughout 2022. These interviews all took place in the past month. So my name is Jonathan Wright. I'm the Managing Director at Colchester Machine Tool Solutions. Um, here at Colchester, we are a designer, manufacturer and distributor worldwide of machine tool products. Uh, we supply globally to the engineering and wider manufacturing sectors. I think looking ahead to 2022, um, the pressures that uh, many businesses are going to face are going to be around protecting margins. There's going to be huge pressure on uh, margin squeeze. Um, we've seen the effects of the past two years and the pandemic, so many pressures on supply chains. Um, yes, you know, shipping costs. Uh, raw material costs, manufacturing costs, labour costs. Um, the other thing that we, we will see uh, a lot of in 2022 is pressure on wages. Um, the rates that inflation uh, is currently running at. Um, we all know fuel costs are going to rise. That just doesn't affect uh, the business from a, from a cost point of view. It affects us all as individuals as well. Um, so there's going to be huge pressures on, on, on wages um, and all of this added together um, is going to increase costs um, and it's going to squeeze margins. So when it comes to um, digital technologies, uh, digital manufacturing, for me it's not a case of it's a nice to have, for me it's a case of it's essential. We know as a nation uh, we, we lag behind our competitors in terms of productivity 
uh, and in terms of actually adopting and embracing this kind of technology. Uh, now, I'm sure we, we're all interested in, uh, as a business, in how we can improve the bottom line. Uh, and one way that we can do that is through increased productivity. Um, now, when we look at um, digital manufacturing um, and, and the technologies behind this, this really is a gateway um, to helping us improve productivity and really make an impact on the bottom line. Uh, my name's Rod Waugh. I'm Managing Director of Beverston Engineering. My company is based in Knowsley and we've been operating since 1974. I do think digitising your processes is very important for manufacturers. I think it's something we've got to do. We're all in the same boat. We all can't get price increases. We need to find other ways of doing it. And the traditional continuous improvement methods like setup reduction and um, uh, reducing scrap and things like that. Yes, you get so far doing it, but then you tend to hit a brick wall and it doesn't seem to happen anymore. But with better information that the technology supplies to, to our engineers enables us to really look at the problems that have got, serious problems that we've got on the shop floor. We've been involved in a project over the last three years of introducing uh, digitized processes into our into our normal daily routines and uh, we've been uh, looking at ways of linking the machines to our ERP system and we've been using a software company called Data Home to enable us to do that and it's been really successful uh, it's highlighting lots of uh, instant changes that are going on on the shop floor our e ERP system updates live or regularly you know every day within a minute you know if there's a problem on the shop floor whereas previously under the old way uh, it would only be after the event had happened and um, the operation had been closed down would we find that there was any problems and it was too late to react then. My name is Noel Doyle I'm the managing director of Organica UK Limited uh, we are a private label manufacturer of household cleaning chemicals and laundry products for the major supermarkets and retailers. 2022 is a new year for us, and 2022 has come with its own set of, of challenges. Uh, the first challenge we have seen is a massive increase in costs of uh, raw materials. And that goes across the board. It goes across from chemicals, through to bottles, through to caps, triggers, cartons, cardboard. Then we have tra issues with transport. And, uh, we're all aware from the news about the shortage of drivers for uh, goods vehicles. We've seen that in supply, uh, with shortages on supply for materials coming in, delays in products, uh, or raw materials rather, coming in to, to us to manufacture with. Uh, these are all conditions we have to, have to face and we all have to, uh, have to address. Um, one of the other issues, which is a consequence of, of the problems we've seen at the start of this year in particular, is that our margin gets squeezed um, by the increases in cost, the increase in transport, the increase in uh, pay that is coming within the within uh, April, um, and to kind of mitigate these and try and maintain the margins that we need to maintain to be be profitable, we have to look at the productivity very very closely, and it's critical that we hit the weekly targets that the production is set to make sure that the income is sufficient to keep the business running in a profitable manner as to uh, which it needs to do so. Um, Ultimately, obviously, there's, there is some costs that have to go to the customer, but there is only so much of those costs that we can pass on to the customer, and indeed the customers are willing to accept, uh, albeit there is a challenge in getting the customers to accept those costs at all. So, therefore, it is, it is mission critical that we look at the productivity of our processes to uh, maximise the yield that we can get from our production facilities and maintain our margins. I'm Andy Dawson, Operations Director for Siddall and Hilton Products Limited, based in West Yorkshire. We are the UK's largest manufacturer of welded mesh and fencing panels, and we manufacture across five production lines, processing circa 18,000 tonnes of steel wire per annum, with a turnover of circa £22 million. Challenges facing manufacturing, um, certainly facing our business, um, rising costs in energy. We are a, a, a high electrical energy user through the welding process. So we are seeing circa 25% increases there 
which quite clearly any improvement internal in the business in the process will assist with that transition as we face some stormy times a headwind this year um, and probably next so we need to make sure that the business is on a sound footing uh, financially um, with data to uh, ensure we can cope. So through the initial phase with the partnership with Data Home, we targeted machine speeds against the standard. With the help of Data Home, we can now see if machines are running at the standard speed and identify inefficiencies. What the system also does, it gives us a pre predicted finish time for the order. So a sales team can see when the order will be ready to the minute. It also allows us to plan service maintenance intervals and also change overs and make sure wire and raw materials are ready at the necessary time. I'm very grateful to the directors of those manufacturers for sharing their thoughts with us and this audience. To paraphrase some of what we heard there, we heard costs increasing, need to reduce wastage, digital tools to identify and report improvement areas. My thanks go to Noel, Rod, Jonathan and Andy for their excellent contributions to this debate. Dr. Peter Drucker, described by Business Week magazine as a man who invented management, said in 1956, you can't expect to manage what you don't measure. When we look at the manufacturing value chain, all of the revenues are generated in the factory environment, other than perhaps the occasional small after sales activities such as warranties. Yet the shop floor is often the least served in terms of information management. Most organizations have payroll and an HR system, financial CRM, stock management, and even MRP and ERP. Yet the assets generating revenues, such as the machines and labor, are served with often paper-based, inaccurate, and untimely reporting processes. Even benchmarking is impossible from this type of reporting, let alone real-time situation management. We visit manufacturers like these every single day. Most will tell us their factory floor is 60% effective, yet many barely make 40% in reality. That means for 60% of the time, those assets are generating no revenues or profits, yet they are incurring costs in labor, power, and depreciation to name but a few. Sadly, we are not the poor relation in the G7 Productivity League without reason. The good news is that by using accurately collected and automated data reporting in real time, a chunk of that lost effectiveness can be returned to revenue generating activities. The result is that you can produce more output with the same assets or the same output with fewer assets and costs. Either way, manufacturers become more profitable and competitive and profit margins increase. The Data Own Intelligent Factory provides an interconnected mesh of Internet of Things interfaces and sensors and devices that extract vast amounts of data from machines and factory environments. Edge computing and cloud-based advanced analytics make sense of all that data and deliver it back in seconds as actionable knowledge, insights and updates to drive optimal manufacturing performance via intuitive dashboards and alarms. Even when you're not at your desk, or for example, in a supplier meeting off site, Intelligent Factory can send you an email, SMS, or even a WhatsApp with the information that you need to know and when you need to know it. Intelligent Factory connects to any machine of any type, manufacturer or vintage. So whether you're putting ketchup in bottles or pills in blister packs, molding packaging or machining parts for the latest Airbus, Intelligent Factory will tell you what is happening and when it is happening, so you can intervene where necessary to optimize your machines, your labor, and your work order throughput. The Intelligent Factory is delivered by Data Home Fully Turnkey. You just have to use it to increase your productivity. If you are still fiddling with paper and spreadsheets and feel your productivity has room for improvement, we should be talking together. Return on investment is measured in months and has been independently verified as being four times that of the investment of a new machine. We're coming to the close of our presentation now. It's been my pleasure to host you throughout. I hope that the information that we have shared with you will help you mitigate cost increases, perhaps through actions such as forward fixed price ordering of energy or raw materials, 
that will give you a known price and near assured delivery in 2022. Also, in making you aware that help is available through government funding schemes to help you drive Industry 4.0 initiatives, including our own intelligent factory system. Whether or not we're facing headwinds in 2022, the right thing to do is to improve the bottom line for our stakeholders by optimising efficiencies. Looking at this favourably, this is more profit to invest and reward, and less favourably, just remaining competitive, particularly with international competitors. For attendees that have shared their work email address with us, we will send you shortly both the slides I've used today and in due course, a white paper covering the topics discussed. We would love to carry on the discussion with you, whether you have questions or just wish to talk further, please drop me a line to my email and I'll put a Zoom call in our respective diaries. Otherwise, we wish you good times in 2022 and hope to see you at our webinar at the beginning of 2023, if not before. Hopefully, we will all be looking at some improved economic outlooks by then. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.